In this topic, we're going to talk about designing for scalability. Uh, this is one of the true promises of a cloud infrastructure is to be able to scale infinitely. Um, this is one of the promises that we've heard uh, for years about why we would even want to leverage the cloud. Um, because there's a lot of bumps to go into the cloud. If we take our applications, sometimes we have to make tweaks to them. Sometimes we have to change the architecture slightly. And um, we need to have some benefit from doing that. Um, so one of the big benefits is to be able to scale your site uh, or your application workload uh, infinitely, um, which is something that's not too many companies out there would be able to do without something like the public cloud. Yeah, it's really interesting too. I was thinking back of a prior customer that uh, they dealt with uh, financial certifications and they had this massive ramp up just like two months of the year. So we had to bill for the entire year to support those two months, but now you're saying we can scale up and scale back, right? Yeah, and, and maintaining that infrastructure, that's the key point, right? So if we have these peaky workloads or these workloads where the customer only does it on the third Friday of the month or yeah. these kind of things. Like tax season or something. <laughs> exactly. Uh, those are perfect workloads for the cloud uh, and for this auto scale notion that we have built into the platform. Um, but also, just think about your application. So if we took a look at the application, we could say, um, and this is kind of simplified, but basically I wanted to show you the differences between the different types of workloads that we have in Azure and how scaling uh, works with those. So in the top, top bar here, above the bar, you can see we have the Azure Web Apps, and we have a single instance here. Uh, we start out with a single instance, and maybe after some work, uh, we can actually go up to two. Now, because this is a PaaS, uh, this stuff above the line is what's called PaaS, uh, which is platform as a service. Um, the stuff on the bottom of the line is infrastructure as a service. We'll talk about these differences. But in the PaaS model, what we can do is either on a schedule, um, so we could have this on you know, every time, at this time, uh, every hour it, we're going to run this thing, or like that third Friday of the month, um, that we're going to spin up these two instances. Very easy for us to do. We can either script it through PowerShell, or we can go into the portal manually and do it. We can do it programmatically. Many different ways to do that. The scaling functionality is built inside of the platform in Azure. You simply need to tell it, I want to run three copies of this, or I want to run four copies of this in order to support my load. Remember that we have a load balancer sitting above all this stuff, so that's going to basically do the round robin and send our request to uh, balance it across these servers. And if we get to the point where we have three, so over here we actually spun up another instance, uh, it'll go ahead and add those on the fly. So we don't have to like take the application down, um, so it's very resilient. Um, we can actually have the application just running live, go ahead and spin new instances up, everything happens great. Now the important point to remember about scaling is, and Mark brought it up right away, was it's not just about scaling up, it's also about how do you scale back down. Um, so we have features in Autoscale to actually do that for us. So we can, again, on a schedule basis, we could say, you know, between these hours on this day, spin up more instances, and then after that, collapse those instances back down. So we have tight control around that from a cost perspective, so we're not wasting money on CPUs sitting out here doing nothing. Um, now that was the key point about uh, running PaaS, but if we look back at IaaS, uh, which is basically we spin up these VMs. Now when we talk about IaaS, we actually have to manage the guest OS on those, so we have a lot more control with them, but you know, with control comes responsibility. Now we have to maintain those things. Now we have to patch them and do all the, the necessary infrastructure work to keep them going. But we do get some benefit because the underlying hardware that's running these VMs is not uh, something that we have to be concerned with. So if we want to spin up, uh, like in this case I have three listed here, we could spin those three up. Um, it's not a lot of work for us to spin those up. It takes a little bit longer than the PaaS instance because we have to actually go out and, and provision a VM, storage, networking, all the things that go along with it. Um, so it's a bit slower. The other thing to remember though about scaling with these IaaS applications is if we have one instance and we say, okay, now we need to scale up and if you look at my diagram, I had like three listed here. Now you can see these other two are kind of grayed out. And the reason I put them as grayed out is because when we're using infrastructure as a service and we want to scale, we have to pre-provision what our maximum load will be. So we have to plan ahead. With PaaS, we didn't have to plan ahead. With PaaS, we just said, give me more. Just keep giving me more, and then I'll spin them down. But with IaaS, we actually have to think ahead and say, what's the maximum number of servers that I could possibly need here? Three, let's say. Okay, so when I'm running with uh, three, most of the time I don't need to run with three. I'll run with two for resilience to make sure that uh, if one of them fails, but I can spin up to three if I want. Now, if we said, oh, I need to go to four, 
And then we're going to have to provision another VM out there. So there is some work involved with doing that. Yeah, so I have a question. If you knew that eventually you would need to go up to four servers, then would you pre provision those initially or just kind of do them as you need them in the future? Yeah, great question. And yeah, you have to pre-provision them. So you have to plan ahead for that kind of thing because there will be a small amount of downtime with doing that. If you get in a situation where you say, oh, I need to add a fifth server and I only really plan for four, uh, then you're going to have a slight amount of downtime while you're doing that because it has to be injected into that cloud service. So do you just keep those shut down then to keep the cost down as well? Exactly. Right. So essentially what Autoscale is doing in the case of IaaS is doing what Mark just said. <laughs> it's automating the turning on and turning off of those. Right. It's kind of a, it seems like an easy thing to do, like, oh, I could write a script to do that. But it's actually a lot more complex than that. Um, the scaler itself, if you've been paying attention in Azure in past years, we had built this out of the enterprise library. And really what that was about was how do you manage, like, you don't want it to do it too quickly or too slowly. Um, so there's a fine line there, right? You don't want to say, as soon as I see the CPU go to 80%, spin up another VM. Because it might only be at 80% for like 10 milliseconds. Maybe something in the server just picked up for a second. And so that's the magic of how Autoscale works in a platform is it can handle those ebb and flows a little bit and kind of smooth that out. Because if you start like, hurry up, spin up a VM. Oh wait, the CPU went down. Okay, kill that VM. That's not really a good thing to have happening. Um, you really need to have that governance in there. Um, and that's the technology that's built in the platform to handle. So a quick important t uh, point I just thought about with the auto scale, can you do that in all the tiers of VMs? So the question was, can you do that in all the tiers? Uh, it definitely supports all the A tiers that we have. So we have a couple different so, we have A's, DS's, and G's. Yeah, I was actually yeah. talking about the pricing tiers, like basic versus standard. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. there's definitely a difference there. You yeah. have to run in the standard, the, the, standard the height and skews in order to right. do this. Definitely. I just want to make sure they knew that. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, that's a good point to bring out. Um, but with that, uh, that's really this discussion. And uh, that kind of wraps up this topic on auto scale and scaling inside Azure.